Ahoy, this is Denka. I have created several videos about Evodo AI Photo Editor last year. Another upgrade, version 5.1.0, is here with new features. Let's test them in this video. For those who don't know what Evodo AI is, it is a software built mainly for professionals. So if you shoot portraits, school portraits, um, sports, fashion, glamour, events, weddings, if you are in this category where you take a lot of photos, you might want to check out this software as it is going to save you a lot of time. This video is brought to you by Evodo. I went ahead and already imported some photos to Evodo AI. As you can see, they are all here. On the left are presets. You can also create your own presets and save them under my presets. On the right, you have all additional tools, AI color adjustments, color adjustments panel, all portrait retouching tools, background adjustments, clothes and accessories adjustments, crop and rotate, t-third shooting, where you can connect your camera and control camera settings. And the last panel is where you can control auto import and export settings. Let's start with new features that were added to clothes and accessories adjustments. The new tools added are the blemish clothing and clothing edge smoothing. Let me also show you the wrinkle clothing as well, as I find it quite impressive. Let's just pull the slider to 64 and see what it does. Let's bring it all the way to 100%. I'm sure you are already seeing a big difference. I'm going to enable before and after side by side so you can see what has been corrected. On the left, the t-shirt is quite wrinkly. On the right, you can see that it has been really straightened out. I also want to mention that if you have a group of people in the shot, you can control this tool on all people or only on selected people. Here at the top, you see what you can select. All, female, male, child, elderly female or elderly male. Let's move on to another photo as I would like to test the Deblemish clothing tool. I'm going to zoom in 100% so we can see all the little dots on the clothing. There are many spots here, as you can see, that could be corrected. I'm going to drag the slider slowly so we can see what it does. I can clearly see that the more I am enabling this tool, the more it's disappearing. This works really well. Let's drag some more and let's drag all the way to 100%. All of it is gone. Let's enable before and after to see the difference. This did an excellent job on this photo. Wherever I look, it's all gone. Let's move to another photo where I would like to test the clothing edge smoothing tool. The sides here could use some help for sure around the waist, the left side especially. Let's just drag it all away to see what it does. I can see a big difference here. The edge on the arm has been corrected, the body as well. The other side has been very slightly adjusted. I like that it didn't overdo it. It looks quite natural. I also wanted to mention that there is an object protection tool. That means the edge will be corrected, but any nearby objects will remain the same. They will not get distorted. Here I selected this fitness photo where you can see some background shapes. As you can see here, all remains the same. Only the edges of the clothing have been fixed. Let's leave clothing and move on to portrait retouching. What is new there? The first one is red eye removal. Now you're gonna be laughing here. I went through all my hard drives and I could not find a decent photo with red eyes in it. <laughs> so I had to recreate one to be able to test this tool. So keep in mind, this is not real. Obviously with this type of studio lighting, you're not gonna get red eyes. I took red eyes from a different photo taken with a smartphone and I literally photoshopped them in this photo. Let's go to the portrait retouching panel and scroll down to the eyes controls. Let's hit that. Here is red eye removal tool. Simple tool, you just turn it on. 
What I love is that the removal is very precise. It leaves the catch light in and it looks really natural. Here is before and after. I tried other software in the past and it was never that precise. Sometimes it just kind of made the whole eye black. This is very precise. The next new tool is called V-Shape Facial Reshape. As the name already suggests, you can change the shape of the face. Facial reshape controls are located just a bit above the eyes tool. Let's hit that and scroll down to V-Shape controls. By default, left and right adjustments are locked with this icon, so you can adjust both sides at the same time. If you unlock that, you can control only the left or only the right side. If I drag to the right, I will create more pronounced V-shape of the face. If I drag left, the face will be round. I'm going to drag it all the way and then ease up so it looks more natural. 50 is good. I can also adjust the jaw length. I'm just going to bring it very slightly to minus 19. Face width control is also new. The same here, you can adjust both sides or only left or right side. If you slide right, the face will get wider. If you slide left, the face will get narrower. Let's just do a minor adjustment to the left for a more natural look. These were new controls when it comes to eyes and face. Let's scroll down and select full body reshape controls. Let's scroll down again to check out leg width, where you can control the width of thigh and calf separately. Below is another new tool called leg length. Now I'm going to give you golden advice in a humorous way. I've shot glamour shots, glamour makeover photo shoots for many years in the past and I worked with many, many different women. Now, when it comes to these kind of tools, you will never mention to your clients that they even exist, otherwise they will get really abused. Most of the women want to look taller and have longer legs and want to be slimmer and younger and all that stuff. So you will use these tools only secretly, just so it looks very natural. <laughs> because once you mention that you have them, I can already see that. Oh, can you make my legs longer? And can you make uh, me, you know, a little bit slimmer and all that? No, you were born this way. These are my rules. I'm just gonna do very natural, minimal adjustments. Those were my rules, but I'm gonna abuse the rules right now because obviously I want to show you the tool, what it's capable of. So if I drag the thigh controls to the right, I will make the part bigger. If I drag it to the left, the thigh will get smaller. If I drag the calf control to the right, it will get bigger and left will get smaller. Let's just do some realistic adjustments. Let's not overdo it. I'm still going to adjust it so we can see the difference. Let's do the calf now. I think this looks pretty good. Let's try the leg length. Oh, I can really see the longer calf in this shot. This is just amazing. I love how it keeps the natural shape of the legs. This image has nice sky. I would not change it. But since Evoto AI has new skies edit, let me show you how this tool works. First of all, there are more skies to choose from compared to Photoshop, for example. And also you get more adjustable options. The same goes to backdrops. There are actually 100 to choose from. Let's go to background adjustments and select sky replacement at the bottom. Let's select recommend it. And here you can see all new skies. Let's try 24, 25. Those are a bit too strong for this image. Let's try more suitable options. 26, 27 is nice. Let's try some more. Let's stay with 27 and go to the adjustment tools. We can adjust vertical and horizontal adjustments. We can control edge transition, color temperature. We can make the sky cooler or warmer we can increase saturation. Okay, let's finish this photo. Let's add on some sky blur. This image really needs it. 
I'm still going to tone it down a bit and also adjust the brightness. I'm still going to play with saturation and temperature. Let's try to match the scenery to the sky and let's also try matching human to the sky. So this would be sky replacement. Another new tool is adding shadow to AI retained shadow. Let me show you. Here is a photo of a male model in the studio. There is a slight shadow around his shoes, so we can work with that. I'm going to go to background adjustments panel and select backdrop changer. Let me just select transparent for now so you can see how well it isolates the person. For this test, I'm going to go with plain white background. Let's scroll down and select AI retained shadow feature. As you can see, it added two shadows around his boots. Let's test add shadow feature. The first option is soft, then we have hard and also drop. Let's go with soft shadow and adjust opacity. This is 100%. I'm still going to tone it down a bit. Shadow blur and blur range I'm going to keep at 100%. Well, there you have it. This is the final look. Let's play with Studio Portrait. Let's say I just want to change the look of the photo. There is an interesting tool called AI Color Match. You will find it in the Color Adjustments panel. I'm going to click here and select AI Color Adjustments. New panel shows up. You can import your own reference image or use one of their portrait samples. New portrait samples have been added. Let's select headshot as reference image. That image will show up on the left. And as you can see, my photo has been completely changed. You can see that when I enable before and after view, I can still change everything. I can control the full image or parts through masking. In a full image, I can adjust amount, tone and color. If I go to masking panel, here I can control person's body parts or background. I can adjust tone and color of facial skin. Let's play with these sliders to see what it can do. Let's do the same with body skin. I see the difference. I would like to keep the same color of her t-shirt, so let's select clothes and take away the color. I am going to keep a little bit of a color to warm it up, but I will bring down the tone. Let's return to full image control and just bring the amount to roughly half of the strength. This is the final image. As you can see at the beginning, it was very dark and the final result is much lighter. There are some new tools under crop and rotate. So let's continue with this photo. Let's select AI horizontal auto correction. I can also further select subject or face. Let's enable subject locate and try horizontal eye alignment. If you had a portrait photo where the model is tiny bit this way, you can even it out. I'm going to go back to vertical alignment. Under face, you have other options such as selecting head, head plus top and face. There are many options here. Let's talk about exporting images. Once you hit export, this window shows up with many settings. As it says here, you can apply multiple effects to the same image at once and export multiple images with different effects. New feature added is export with multiple presets and sizes. You can export the image in JPEG full size, web size or TIFF format for A4 size print or A3 size. If you scroll all the way down, another new feature is output sharpening. You can select specific sharpening for screen or print. Both of them let you choose between standard, low and high. What I didn't talk about yet is the library. Let's hit that. If you have multiple projects and you need to find a specific project fast, you can now look it up if you hit this search icon. Let's go to the right side of the page and hit the eye icon below presets. Here is access to all your metadata that you can edit. File name, title, caption, 
copyright and creator. I love seeing how the software is getting bigger and better. This is now fourth video I'm making about Ibodo AI. I'm gonna create a playlist of all the videos and place it below the video description for those interested so you can see the rest of the tools. There are really many. Also, if you don't have this software, but you want to test it out, the link to Evoto AI is there as well. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video informative and don't forget to subscribe for more. Meanwhile, I'll see you in one of those videos next. Ciao. Ahoy.